Before starting a single line scan, enter the settings menu and set the correct settings, especially the rebar diameter, unit, minimum cover if required and display curve. To begin, the probe cart should be ideally positioned with the measurement center at the midline of the rebars running parallel to the scan direction. In this position, both rectangles in the probe symbol will be of equal minimum size. The initial position of the probe cart is indicated by the start line on the screen. Scan across the rebars, not exceeding the maximum speed. The speed bar should be about half filled and green. Above each rebar, when the red LED of the measurement center lights up, you may measure the rebar diameter. On completion, it will be displayed in blue. The measured diameter may be deleted within 5 seconds by tapping on the icon as shown. If the spacing between the rebars is in the range of 5 cm to 13 cm, 2 inches to 5.2 inches, set the respective neighboring rebar correction to obtain a more accurate diameter estimation. The end of the scan is indicated by a blue line on the screen. Store the data by tapping on the save icon. The saved data can now be reviewed in the statistics view, the single line view and also in the snapshot view if at least one diameter was measured. Before starting a multi-line scan, enter the settings menu and set the correct settings as for the single line mode. Additionally, set the line height and return to start on new line. When this is set, the measurement begins at the start line for each new row and the scan is always carried out in the same direction. Alternatively, for larger areas, it is advisable not to set return to start on new line. In this case, the end of one scan line marks the beginning point for the second scan line and the scan is in the opposite direction to return back to the original starting point. To begin, position the probe cart in an optimum position as for the single line scan, with the measurement center at the midline of the rebars running parallel to the scan direction. Scan across the rebars, not exceeding the maximum speed. As before, the diameter may be measured if desired when the red LED of the measurement center lights up. At the end of the first line, a dotted blue line is set as a marker. To proceed with the next line, tap on the icon as shown or press the left and right buttons simultaneously on the probe. The cursor jumps to the next measuring row. Depending on whether return to start on new line is set, move back to the start line and scan the second line, or simply move the probe cart down to the next line and scan back towards the start line. Tapping on the cover spectrum switches the display between cover and diameter. Rebars where the diameter was not measured or set are shown in white. Diameters measured are shown in the respective color. Diameters set in the single line view are shown additionally with an orange crossbar in the middle of the rebar. Once the data has been saved, it can be reviewed in the statistics view, the single line view, the multi-line view and also in the snapshot view if at least one diameter was measured. To start an area scan, enter the settings menu. Set the correct settings as for the single line and multi-line mode. Additionally, the grid width must be set. It must be about 1.1 times larger than the minimum rebar spacing of the first layer rebars. This guarantees at least one rebar located within each grid. When used in combination with potential field measurements, the grid settings should match those of the half-cell instrument. Since the area mode is used on rather large areas, return to start on new line should not be set. Carry out the scan exactly as in the multi-line mode. Once again, after storage by tapping on the save icon, the data can be seen in the statistics view, the multi-line view, 
and also in the snapshot view if at least one diameter was measured. With the cross line mode, the rebars of the first and second layer can be displayed, typically arranged in a rectangular mesh. The measuring procedure is the same as for multi-line mode, but this time scanning first in the X direction and then in the Y direction. To change from X to Y scanning and vice versa, tap on the grid icon. Once the data has been saved, it can be reviewed in the statistics view, the single line view, the cross line view, and also in the snapshot view if at least one diameter was measured. In the cross line view, the signal strength spectrum can be seen in addition to the cover and diameter. This enables other rebar arrangements, such as inclined rebars, in the X, Y and Z direction, to be more realistically displayed. The statistics view presents a statistical calculation of the cover values measured. On the horizontal axis, the cover values are displayed. The vertical bars show the percentage of the respective cover values measured. The vertical cursor bar can be moved to any cover value. The figure to the left of the cursor bar shows the percentage of measured cover values smaller than the cursor position. The value to the right shows percentage of measured cover values larger than the cursor position. The cover value is displayed at the bottom of the cursor bar. The percentage of measured covers for that cover is shown at the top. If set, minimum required cover is shown as a vertical dotted line in red. Covers below the minimum are shown as red bars. Covers above the minimum as yellow bars. There are two different statistics views, the normal and the DBV evaluation. The DBV evaluation is a widely used evaluation of the cover readings according to the German Concrete and Construction Association. It is also recommended by RILEM. Tap on the statistical values windows to switch from normal to DBV. For more technical information, applied standards or any other questions, please contact your local ProSec representative or visit our website.